नीरज केशव विनोज पुष्कर हाई ऑल सो या देर आर क्वेट लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल आर सपोज टू एनी वे वी आर जस्ट वन मिनट अवे फ्रॉम एक्चुअल स्टार्ट ऑल्सो सो जस्ट बींग बिट ऑफ सिस्टम चेकिंग वेरी मच हाय हाय बानो so guys did you like the last class uh, was it helpful was that uh, you know understanding of what exactly are we trying to achieve uh, so that is something you know which is uh, very much required uh, uh, and once we you know get deep into the system so many times it happens that you know we actually uh, are so much uh, Uh, involved into the intrinsics of, or into the intricacies of the systems that uh, we just forget that what exactly is the thing which we are trying to achieve here so that was more of you know setting the pitch and all for the for the sessions in fact today also there will be a lot of concepts lot of new things uh, which uh, you know uh, you should be aware before uh, you start uh, doing actually or that administration kind of a work where exactly you know typically the Role role of an administrator comes from the system maintenance point of view, system upgrade, and probably monitoring and all that stuff. But uh, having said that, knowing these concepts well, knowing at least how exactly the processes work inside, right? Uh, that is of course invaluable, right? Everybody would agree on that uh, side, right? So we'll still uh, see a lot of new concepts. So I'm just waiting. If it is okay, it's seven one. if it is okay uh, we'll just wait for another 2 or 3 minutes uh, for others also to join and uh, then we're going to start it uh, you know completely is this okay with everybody mm sure what are we covering today so yeah uh, we let that that's where uh, we going to start it so it's about hadoop server roles it would be a bit more details about uh, uh, you know a uh, uh, bit more uh, detail about uh, like uh, how file operations and a bit of cluster configuration and all so th these are some of the things which uh, will be covering don't worry this is what uh, we are going to set up very soon okay neeraj vanilla version or uh, cds for so keshav yeah uh, i'll i'll uh, i'll tell this point it would be uh, cdh 4 uh, only uh, but uh, yes uh, let me uh, tell you bit more detail about uh, cdh 4 so it would be cdh 4 to answer your question shaker says last class was very much helpful i would like to know if we are going to cover installation part also yeah shaker she would be happy to know something here so i have some things in store <laughs> Okay, shake it. Just wait. Nice. So just under two more minutes, and uh, okay. By the way, you guys, uh, uh, do you guys uh, watch these recordings also after the class? How many of you, or, or rather than saying, do you guys? How many of you really watched it? Jagan, Amit, Pushkar, Rakesh actually said I watched. Pushkar, you know, Vinod says I did not. Okay, was busy last week. Yes, yes, it happens. All of uh, we understand. I mean, we all are you know working. So this week was very hectic. Yes, Keshav, the the. the only worry you know why why i raise this point you know even though it is available okay and what will happen is uh, you have that lifetime access to this entire lms uh, material also you know what really happens is that uh, the the normal study pattern or the the way our mind works is uh, within 24 hours if we don't repeat or we don't revise at least touch it then 80% of that is lost and uh, even though you have these pointers on a later date you know it becomes more and more difficult 
to refer what exactly was the context at the time when this guy told, right? So just just try to uh, visit these things probably j either in bits and pieces because we do a lot of discussions right I mean I, I try to keep in the class interactive by asking you people some questions giving you some chances to come on the line and you know tell so you can just skip these parts but uh, do uh, go through them within a week hardly two hours if you just you know run it okay I have to migration our Hadoop cluster from our to the new one. That's strange, Amit. So you are saying you are moving to Hadoop 2.0, Amit? Is this what you are saying? Is this in production? Yes, Keshav. So, of course. So, in fact, we also believe in a complete, uh, you know, practical itself. But uh, before, you know, there are some specific things. So it is very easy to show some practical things uh, when you are doing a developer kind of uh, uh, class. It's, it's very easy. Here, uh, when it comes to admin, before you actually get into some sort of, uh, uh, you know, hands-on, you should know some of the uh, important theoretical points. So you should know how exactly the system is working. Then only you can easily go and, you know, you can still, uh, uh, you, you can just try some of the things. So there will be a lot, of, you know, uh, a lot of hands-on uh, specific things which are there today for you people. So I am very clever. I will not do it <laughs> in the class. But yes, with the screenshots and all, we have kept it. Okay, Keshav, there will be no dearth of it. Designing the hardware nowadays, that's great. CDH4 instances, thinking of two or latest one can take in. Okay, guys, so enough, enough. I think uh, seven, six it is, and uh, we should just start uh, on, uh, you know, today's session. So uh, let me just see if uh, there are uh, any more people to join us. I think there are a lot of people uh, who are supposed to join us in some time. But anyway, as all of you know, right, that uh, the first, uh, uh, part of the session is always about connecting the dots or you know refreshing the memories as I can see uh, within all you attendees itself that uh, there are a lot of people who were busy uh, who had something or other task uh, in last week so I'm sure uh, we would be uh, good if we can do a bit of quick revision and some of these parts would be you know uh, we would be revisiting them th those parts in bit more details uh, again and again in today's class as well as in going further in those classes also but probably from a different light so even if let's say you did not uh, go through uh, the material even if you did not revisit the material that's completely fine uh, we you still have some chance because we'll we'll be revisiting it but the thing is my only earnest request to you is the maximum take which you can uh, you know if you have to take maximum out of this class then please go through this because these are the very few theory sessions which you are having and more than that you know once you get into the system then it becomes very difficult because your focus would be on commands your focus would be on ui your focus would be on probably uh, the outcome of uh, whatever you know you are issuing that's it or probably the file system then you will forget what exactly was covered right so it's very important to see through these initial some classes okay uh, Okay, now let's start with the course topics of today. So last week we talked about Hadoop 2.0. Basically, we had a, uh, literally we had uh, the comparison of Hadoop 1.0 versus Hadoop 2.0. We saw what exactly were the differences and all that stuff, and then we talked a bit about uh, configuration files. I think that some of that was overlap. We definitely learned some new configuration files which were specific to Yarn. And then we talked about uh, popular Hadoop distributions. Now, when it comes to today, the coverage is at the higher level on the Hadoop server roles itself. So what exactly are the different Hadoop server roles? Some of that would be overlapping. But then, again, uh, we would be covering the other new aspects. So we would, we would revisit these things. We'll try to explore some more aspects. You will see when whenever we uh, visit you know, uh, these uh, slides one by one. Then a bit about data processing flow. So when we talk about data processing flow, uh, it's not just uh, the MapReduce process or uh, YARN process which we are talking about. What really happens when you put a file into 
HDFS. What really happens when you try to read the file from HDFS? Internally, what are the things which are going on, right? So these are the things which we are going to cover in a bit more detail. And then last but not the least, there will be a small, very, very small slide on uh, cluster network configuration. This would just be the indicative kind of thing. We'll just have a, probably we'll have a very small discussion on, the, on it. And then you will have some very interesting assignments which I'll tell you at the end of the class. And nevertheless, there, uh, just a sec, let me check before I commit it to you. Uh, yes, and as uh, I uh, am fond of a lot of interactiveness in the class, so I keep asking the questions to you people. I keep involving you know uh, involving you people one by one, as uh, as well as there will be some poll questions sprinkled here and there. Uh, I'll keep launching them as and when some logical points will come. Okay. Uh, as far as the questions uh, thing, I hope you found the last uh, class uh, quite okay, wherein instead of taking the questions as it is, probably uh, we'll be taking the questions at the logical end of a concept itself. Okay, so before I go forward, okay, sure, Binu, so Binu just said let's roll, <laughs> sure. So that that is about uh, today's uh, you know at the higher level. But now when I I break down these topics, these were these would be the points uh, which we'll be covering. Uh, you know, in uh, detail. just a sec, let me see if somebody is pinging something. Let me see that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So now the topics for today. Would would be as I just said, we'll start with a bit of revision. Hadoop server roles, their uses, there we will actually be revisiting. We'll literally be revisiting the new Hadoop 2.0 cluster, but there will be a small twist. And this small twist contains a big uh, story in, in itself. So there is an important concept. I intentionally did not tell it in the last class though somebody mentioned it also. So uh, that is something which we are going to cover in uh, you know, today's class. And uh, it would be a bit about SDFS architecture, then anatomy of a write operation as I just told. There is something when you write the data into you know, uh, HDFS cluster, or uh, basically the HDFS itself, uh, there is something called, uh, all of you know, right, that the data is replicated. So there is something called replication pipeline. So what exactly is that pipeline? What is the rule of it? How does the internals work? And what happens in the case of failures and all, right? So those would be the things which we'll be talking about. Then, of course, once you, uh, anatom so I would say the anatomy of right itself would be very detailed. In fact, it will be very time consuming also because this is a very important aspect, right? Day in, day out, this is what you will be doing in SGFS, or rather than you, all of your developers who would be working in our cluster, they would be doing this part, right? So it's very important for you to understand that. Once you understand anatomy of a right, then I'm sure half of you, or more than half of you, will be able to predict what exactly is going to be the anatomy of a read operation. Probably in that case, I'll take a break, and I'll ask one of you, you know, to explain it for me, okay? That is one. Then, the other thing is, Rack awareness, right? We talked about it, right? That uh, it, it places three replicas. So Hadoop places three replicas of your data in the cluster. How does it decide? What are the metrics which go into this factor, right? And how do you, you know, really calculate it about it? Uh, so uh, those those details are the ones which we'll try to, you know, cover in this concept called rack awareness, and. Uh, then again, we'll revisit from the data processing side of YARN versus MRV2. It's more of a reminder kind of a slide, or uh, you know, we'll uh, revisiting kind of a slide because the next class is the one where we'll be doing a bit of this hands-on. Uh, okay, uh, probably we we try to run something. We try to analyze the roles of each and every part of it. At that time, this will be really useful. So it's it's like the the last two things, right? Data processing and then cluster con network configurations are acting like a, what should I say, uh, they they are going to act like uh, the markers for the next class altogether. So uh, as well as they will help you when you will be doing your assignments 
also at the end of the class. Okay, guys, are we good? Can I proceed? Or do you guys want to ask something at this point of time in this? Okay, so Deep says yes. Only Deep says yes. What about others, guys? Shaker says yes. Good. Great. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Now, is the part of the session which I love the most. Revise. So, guys. Hadoop 1.0 versus Hadoop 2.0. You remember, right? And if you have not gone through the slides uh, or you have not revised it, some of you might face the difficulty or some of you might be having some hazy picture. But this is where the most of the interaction happen in the class. Who will volunteer and tell me the main three differences, just the aspects of these three differences, which are there between Hadoop 1.0 and Hadoop 2.0. Anybody who would like uh, to come on the mic and then tell? Anybody? Just say yes or okay, I'll put. Okay, Deep. I, so I'm putting Deep on the air and you guys need to tell whether he's telling correctly or not. So Deep, you are on the air. Hi, Deep. Hi, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I'm able to hear you. I'm sure others are also. Yeah, so Vishal, um, just sorry my voice, I just got up. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> okay. It and it's uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 6.45 in the morning. Completely okay. Completely okay. <laughs> I, I just remember uh, two things. Uh, there are mm -hmm. multiple nodes, name nodes. Mm -hmm. So that is one difference. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a resource manager so, that has mm -hmm. been uh, managed by Jan. Like okay, I'll, 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 uh, can I stop you in between? Sure. Can I ask you one question? Yeah. Have you seen the recording after uh, no, I, I, the last? I, did. <laughs> I, I didn't get a chance, correct. sorry for that. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. That's yeah. right. So, okay, your one part is correct, uh -huh. but the other part is not. So, so what I can uh, say that there is no job tracker. Such. Okay. So uh, okay. No, no, no. I am not even going into the details. Okay. Shaker is uh, volunteering for it. Sure. I'm putting you on mute now. I'll give the sure. chance to Shaker. Sure. Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay. And Keshav is very smart. He keeps typing the answers. But you should, Keshav, you should volunteer to answer. Yeah. I mean, come on there. Anyway, Shaker, I am going to put you. I'm unmuting you now. Shaker. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the difference between 1.0 and 2.0 uh, like uh, we have only one name node in Hadoop 1.0, and we have many um, name nodes in. We can have many name nodes in 2.0. Then about the um, availability, the high availability is not present in 1.0, and uh, in Hadoop 2.0 it's uh, highly available. Um, then um, about the processing. Uh, we have job tracker, task tracker in Hadoop 1.0 and we have um, resource manager, node uh, manager, app master in Hadoop 2.0. Great, great. So, I would say uh, that's, that's great. Okay. Uh, you are almost 100% correct. Okay. Just one question can I ask you. So as you said, there is only one name node in Hadoop 1.0, whereas there are multiple name nodes in Hadoop 2.0, right? Yes. Shita? What yes. is the driving factor towards it? Uh, it's because of, I mean, uh, if, if suppose one name node crashes, the active name node crashes, automatically the passive name node will become active and uh, the show will run. But in case Guys, of others, others are listening to him. So do you agree? Subhash has given me the correct answer. Guys, do you agree with Shekhar? Guys, can you type? Some, somebody can type whatever Shekhar said. Did you hear that last part? Jagan. And also for the vertical scalability. Mm -hmm. Yes, Senthil, you are correct. Subhash, you are correct. 
No, Shekhar, <laughs> you actually corrected it, but in a different way. I'll give you the chance to somebody else also, once more, okay? Okay. But thank you. Nevertheless, I'll, I'll summarize it once more. So guys, anybody who wants to say anything on this? Guys? Or I'll pick somebody. Pushkar. Sure, Pushkar. So Pushkar, I am putting you on the air. Now, hi Pushkar. Hello. Pushkar? Mm, seems like there's some problem. Anybody else other than Pushkar? I have a very specific question. What is the driving factor towards multiple name nodes? So Pushkar seems some problem at your end. Anybody other than Pushkar who wants to come on the mic? Sure, Subhash. Because I know that you have already given the correct answer. Subhash, you are on the air. No, Keshav, your answer is wrong. Chakravarti, your answer is also wrong. Yeah, Subhash. Yeah, the main driving factor for uh, uh, to come here is like uh, we wanted to uh, um, go across the issue of horizontal scalability. Uh, like horizontal have scalability, yes. Yeah. See, we high have availability is different question altogether. High availability, when you talk about high availability, you are saying within a name space you are having an active and a standby. But when you talk about multiple name nodes, right? Multiple name spaces all together, right? You remember name space volume, da sorry, data block uh, uh, volume and all we talked about, right? Anyway, we'll revisit. So don't worry if you, even if you remember if you don't remember it properly. So that federation is basically for horizontal scalability, right, Subhash? You are hundred percent correct. I'll I'll put you on uh, mute now. Okay? Thank you. Now, guys. So this is the horizontal scalability. Why? Because what, what really, so okay, rather than me answering it, anybody tells me how do you achieve horizontal scalability using HDFS federation? Any, anybody? Anybody? See, this is very important concept, okay? Uh, that's why we have you know, there is there will be no point if you will be moving forward without knowing this. Yes, HDFS Federation. Okay, Amit. I'm giving you a chance now. Amit, you are on the air. Okay. Uh, Hi, Amit. Hi. So uh, the one one part it was the uh, single point of failure. It was there. So active passive took care of that one. The other bottleneck was uh, the number of client, it can be part of that single point of name node. So by adding more uh, group of name space, which can help us uh, horizontal scalability. So that is what How? I think. Okay. So, How? So, let's, so it was a group of, so let's say I have uh, 10,000 nodes, so first 4,000 will be taken care of one particular of name space. I mean, it will be like uh, grouped by the namespace so multiple namespace will be taken care and uh, they can scale more than the 4000 host which was limited earlier okay sure see you are partially correct uh, i am putting you on mute before i give the right answer binoj i am selecting binoj binoj can i give you a chance because i can see you are not attentive binoj Binoj, are you able to hear me? Okay, Binoj is not responding right now. Okay, Binoj, so, okay, but I don't know. That's fine. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Neeraj is saying to give him a chance. Neeraj, this is your chance, and after that, otherwise I'll explain, because we have limited time also, right? Okay, Neeraj, you are on there. Hi, guys. Okay. Hi. So, uh, Hadoop 2.0, right? So, we have high availability and uh, federation. The um, uh, single name node uh, when we have um, millions of blocks to read, right? So the name node function is to hold all the file information into the memory. But Very when good. grows really for, uh, when cluster is really big, name node cannot hold all that uh, uh, data into the memory. So we need this federation thing to distribute the load to the other node so that 
all the data nodes, they can talk, they can share the information with these multiple nodes. Very good, very good, Neeraj. I mean, excellent. I mean, uh, I, we are not in a physical class, otherwise, I would have definitely asked others to, you know, give you a big hand. So yes, that's dot on the target. Now the thing is, I'm just uh, putting it for the entire class, you know, so that they can connect it. So the problem is with the we all knew, right, that all the metadata of the data which is stored in SDFS is stored in name node, and name node stores it in the main memory, right? It cannot afford of storing it into the hard disk because it has to cater for all the clients, right? So from the hard disk, it is going to be very slow. Now the thing is, when the cluster size grows beyond a particular size, what is the number? Neeraj, can you remember that number? Neeraj, uh, okay, 4,000, yes guys, so more than 4,000, if, if you uh, basically, you know, uh, are having uh, 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 that, that big cluster, then it becomes a problem, so vertical scaling of the name node is not possible, that's why they have added multiple name nodes with multiple name spaces and they have gone horizontal way, okay, now there was somebody, I think it was Shravan, who was saying, I confront this answer, Shravan, can I give you a chance? So you might be having a different way. I'm putting you on the air now. Shravan, you're on the air. Guys, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, definitely. So yes, Shravan, please go ahead. Hi, Shravan. Uh, you store the data in HDFS. Yes. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, I can clearly Hello? hear you. Yes, yes. Hello. Shravan? Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, please tell us. I have a use case. Yes, I have a use case of files in HDFS. Um, but um, my scenario is such that I have Hello. different usage or different different quotas. Mm -hmm. uh, Shavan, it seems your so, voice. Yes, yes. Let's yes. say financials. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Shavan, it seems. Uh, take me off there. Yes, yes, sure. Shavan, we'll discuss it a bit later. Not a problem. If, if let's say, uh, le let us let us move with the revision part. Is if this is okay, I'll discuss it with you. Okay, Shavan. Probably you can just type it or probably you can just type somebody because uh, we have the people from support team also, they would be uh, answering your question. So you can just type it, they, your specific question uh, would be answered there also, okay. I'm just continuing it with the next points, uh, we are fastly, you know, running short of the time here. Now the next thing is Hadoop configuration files, right. So can somebody tell me what is the role of Hadoop environment.sh? or rather than that, yarn environment.sh, anybody, anybody, yarn env.sh, you saw that right, last time, guys, anybody who is volunteering for that, or I'll choose somebody then, guys, are you able to hear me? Okay, so Swapnil, I'll put you on there and Swapnil, you are on the air now. Hello. Hi Swapnil, yeah, yeah, so yeah, let, uh, let us know. In, there is a major, major three configuration files uh, also. Uh, Haru, Haru. So I'm, I'm just asking oh, about yarn, yarn environment.sh. What do you uh, set there? Sir, Hadoop environment.sh is uh, used for setting the Java home path and all that. Uh, Yarn, I have some, some difficulties in that. But uh, okay. Hadoop sure. environment.sh, I Okay, know. okay, sure, okay. sure. So I'll put you on mute. Uh, let us save some time, could you explain? Sure, Neeraj. So the thing is, uh, the Yarn environment.sh, when it comes uh, to that, 
you are going to have the machine specific require, uh, configurations whatever you can do so we talked about it right let's say you are having a cluster wherein you are setting the java home so now you have to install java on each and every file uh, sorry each and every node altogether on some of the uh, some of the uh, you know machines you are going for let's say sun jdk but some of the machines you might go for uh, or you might opt for uh, uh, open jdk altogether or probably let's say your java home itself is different right in those cases you can actually do these machine specific configurations in yarn environment dot sh or hadoop environment dot sh is this clear everybody able to recall it guys can i get some yes and the other reason is why I'm asking you guys is because this way I'm ensuring that at least you know you are putting some pressure <laughs> on your mind and you know that way. Hopefully everybody understands that, right? Okay. Then uh, now the next uh, thing is yarn site dot xml. Guys, what do you see in yarn site? So I'm not even asking about core site etc. and all. What is what is there in yarn site dot xml? Anybody? Guys, okay. Anyway, I think uh, uh, I'm not seeing a much of the participation here. Uh, this Shekhar, I'm putting you on unmute. You better, uh, you can actually uh, tell us on the mic itself. Shekhar, you are on the air. Shekhar? Yeah, uh, it is used for. Uh, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Everybody. It is, yeah, it is used for setting. Yeah, yeah, specific settings like uh, resource manager, node manager. Very good, very good. Auxiliary services, etc. right? What are the ports, yeah. what is the HTTP address, and so and so forth thing, right? So, yarn specific right. settings are uh, going to be there, and uh, the kind of settings which we uh, talked about, uh, the same thing, right? Resource manager, all those ports, and all that stuff, right? Okay, thanks, uh, Shekhar. Shekhar, so now that you are on the air itself, what were the main considerations which we talked about planning of a Hadoop cluster? Can you answer that? Mm -hmm. uh, the hardware part and the software part? Mm -hmm. No, they are the components anyway. Yes. What are the considerations? Do you remember? Or if it is okay, if you don't remember, I'll, I'll ask somebody else. No, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Senthil, can I ask you? I'm putting you on the air now. Senthil? Okay. So, Senthil, you are on the air. Hi Senthil. Okay. It's seen some problem. It's okay. So Neeraj, you missed the last class, but uh, okay, he also does not remember. So <laughs> that's why I am saying, you know, this revision is very important. <laughs> so Neeraj says I was busy in reading Hadoop operations. That's fine. So guys, uh, the thing is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the main considerations for you would be, of course the data size the first thing was the data size itself you guys remember we, we talked about it that uh, let's say you are having one terabyte of data then the minimum storage requirement for you would be at least three, three terabytes plus four terabytes plus assuming that you are going with the replication factor of three the other thing is again you will have to see how many data nodes are there which you are planning right based on that you have to decide what exactly is going to be the strength of your name node cluster or what exactly is going to be the configuration of your name node uh, in the uh, cluster itself right because name node is the one which is going to have the metadata all together so it is the memory hungry machine right so it's ram configuration you saw that right a sample sizing wherein we talked about 64 gb of ram and all that stuff 16 cores and all right guys are you able to recall that okay the third and very important guys can I get some yes at least some yes okay nice now there was one, one more and what, what was very important point was that even if there was a case wherein your data is not even growing so your data has not really grown okay but still your RAM requirements can increase what was the case the case was 
that you are an administrator, you have set up the cluster for your company and you have done one uh, successful application setup. Now a lot of people will come and they will say, hey, we also want to migrate towards Hadoop. So we are also putting our applications in Hadoop altogether. In this case, even if, let's say, your data size is not increasing, yeah, the, the, the processes, the number of processes which have to be maintained by job tracker or probably in case of Yarn, by the resource manager and all will increase. So your memory requirements are even going to increase. So even if you're, so uh, this is the case where it, the data size is not increased, but still the memory requirements or the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the configuration of the name node can vary a lot. So we talked about all these uh, important points, right? You guys are able to recall that? Guys, great. So ideally, I, I wanted these answers. So it, I'm just setting some expectation because, you know, last class was my first one with you people. Uh, you know, for going for, for all the classes, it is, uh, we always follow this methodology wherein uh, you always have to, you know, uh, connect the things for the previous class because it doesn't make much of the sense you move forward and you keep forgetting what exactly you have learned previously. Okay guys, all of you found this helpful or not? Pushkar, it is valid for Hadoop 2 also. Pushkar, to answer your question. Okay, especially for the guys who were busy either reading Hadoop operations <laughs> or uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> or just busy in uh, their projects. Anyway, kidding. Now, let's start with this slide. Everybody is able to recall this slide? Everybody? Can I get yes? Shavan, basically R sync is required for the delta copy of the files altogether, right? So whenever this, this uh, uh, communication between the secondary name node and the primary name node will happen, right? At that time, R sync will be required. Okay? Shavan? Nice. Okay. Guys, are you able to see the slide now? Okay. So Deep, hopefully you are also able. So Shekhar, I'll answer your question a bit later, please. Okay. Because there are some important points which we want to discuss here. Okay. Now guys, hopefully everybody, so others are able to see. So Deep, hopefully uh, you will also be able to see it now. The thing is, if everybody is able to recall it, do you see do you see uh, or can you recall, is there a difference? I am telling you there is a difference. It is not the same as whatever you have seen in last class. Can somebody tell me what is the new thing which you are seeing? So I am not really playing tell me the difference kind of thing between two pictures. But there is a, if you guys can recall it, then there is something new which I have added. Very good. Rakesh is correct. And I'm not telling what Rakesh was told. No, Senthil, you are not correct. Amit is correct. Okay, so let me uh, end this uh, confusion. The new thing is the journal node altogether. Okay, so journal node, last time we talked about. So guys, I'm just repeating it now and just quickly repeating it and then I'll cover the new part altogether, which is the journal node. So why I didn't put it last time, why am I putting this time and what is the role of the journal node altogether. So guys, if you remember from the last class, or for each and every namespace, you are going to have active name node and standby name node. And the main thing is that at any point of time, both of the name nodes, okay, both of the name nodes are going to share the state altogether through highly available, uh, you know, uh, edit logs. So that's called shared edit log, which you saw last time. And then you have an alternative secondary name node altogether. Then we, in detail, we talked about, right, failover, fencing, and uh, uh, 
a very important protocol which I told last time to you people. Stone it, shot the other node in the head, right? Literally that meant uh, this. So we talked all about and then the changes were that all the data nodes were sending the heartbeats as well as the block reports to both of the name nodes and uh, things like that, right? We have all discussed it. So shared edit logs are the ones which are more like, uh, uh, you know, uh, wherein uh, uh, the, the data block mapping is actually shared between active and the standby name node. That was the primary way of working it. But now there is, I'm telling you, there is an another alternative mechanism called journal nodes or more importantly, Quorum Journal Manager. Quorum Journal Manager altogether. So what is it? How does it really help in sharing the edit log state between the active name node and the standby name node? We will be talking about that. So what we are trying to tell here is you can either go for the shared edit log via the highly available shared uh, storage or you can use the concept of journal, journal node altogether. So what are these journal nodes? And all I'm going to cover now in detail in the slide this. Before I explain, there are some comments. Naresh is saying he cannot see the slide. I hope others are able to see. So Naresh, either you can probably leave the meeting and then join back. Or probably I hope you are able to see now. Okay. Now until you commit the, now I can. Amit is saying, until you commit the original file donor get update and write to them once you so amit anyway uh, hopefully you will allow me to uh, you know uh, explain it then it will be clear to everybody shravan is saying i don't think these slides are in lms so shravan this is the class 3 so these slides would be uploaded i think either they they are uploaded by now or they would be uploaded after the class okay no Amit you are not correct in this guess I'll let me tell uh, what exactly is happening inside and then it will be clear okay okay uh, Binoj is saying these are in LMS yes Binoj they are in LMS uh, these slides would be in LMS by the way anyway okay so now let's quickly come back let's talk about what do I really mean by uh, something called uh, journal nodes and all that? So guys, shared edit log, that was one mechanism. Now, the other mechanism, I think somebody told also in last class that he uh, missed basically that QJM concept. Okay, And I told also that purposefully I have not covered it. Now the thing is, in Hadoop 2.0, there is a con. Okay, so Shravan says it was me. <laughs> okay, Shravan. Okay, so now quickly. So now the thing is, there are there is a new daemon process itself, which has been uh, you know introduced in Hadoop 2.0. That is called journal nodes. By default, and I repeat it, by default there are three journal nodes which can run in your cluster. The use of them, the use, they are used basically to keep both the name nodes means the active name node as well as the standby name node in the sync altogether so that their that basically uh, edit logs are at the same state. How do they achieve? We will see now. But another important thing is if you guys are thinking that your journal name nodes or your QGM service will be starting for the CDH virtual machine, let me tell you it will not start. Can somebody tell me why will it not start? Okay, so let me uh, tell. So Shravan is saying he will tell me. Okay, Shravan, uh, but I'll not put you on there. That's fine. Uh, so the thing is, it needs 
at least three different machines or at least you know yes you need at least three journal nodes exactly on the virtual machine you can run only one journal node all together right because you are dealing with only one instance of the machine right guys as an administrator it is very important for you to know because tomorrow somebody can say hey i have installed quick vm and uh, but i am not able to see the journal nodes running so you should have the answer for it why you will not be able to see it so how will you be able how will you be able to see the journal nodes running when you will do actually a cluster configuration all together at that time only you can run the journal nodes so by default in the virtual machine it is not gonna run let me clarify that okay now what really happens is whenever any file operation happens so when i mean by any file operation either you are creating the file or you are deleting the file or probably let's say you are just appending something in the file okay so if any of these operations happen then your active name node is the one which will always write this operation whatever is happening on the file in i'm repeating in majority of the journal nodes in the majority of the journal nodes okay before i explain by majority let me see somebody is asking something you need at least so you need at least three journal nodes yes shravan that's correct so you need to write it in at least majority of the journal nodes all together so what does majority means here since you are having three journal nodes the active name node is going to write any file operation in the edit logs which are there in at least in two journal nodes all together okay now the standby name node which is the right it is always now capable of reading these edit logs from a, all of these journal nodes all together so what it will do is the these these basically the, the standby journal node all together sorry standby name node it will constantly keep watching these journal nodes constantly it will keep watching in very short interval that is there any change in the edit log state if there is and whether that change is in the majority of them or not so if it is there in majority of those edit logs it will immediately apply that edit log change in its own edit log which is being maintained okay and so that way it just keeps updating its edit log uh very very uh, frequently because the as i said it just keeps watching the journal nodes all together so that's the another mechanism here now what really happens is if let's say some failure happened so active name node is down so if you remember last time right how do you, how did you actually found, find that uh, the active name node failed i told right in practical scenario you will never be able to find out so failover processes were running but here if you are applying the qjm concept then the simple way is it will find hey you know what there is this edit log entry new edit log entry which is there in one journal node but it is not available in remaining two journal nodes and why it is not there if it if it happens for a longer time it means the other active name node the actual active name node is down okay it means the actual active name node is down so this is where this will be the trigger point for your standby name node to be aware that time has come for me to be active is this clear up to this point because there are some something more how will it how will it happen that there is something more but up to this point is this clear pushkar i'll answer your question a bit later guys is this clear explain the trigger again yes pushkar i'll explain senthil i'll answer your question in a while let me explain the concept and then your your question will be answered at the end of this concept itself automatically okay you will realize it okay so now uh, pushkar is saying will i explain the trigger again and pushkar only asked the other question so does the active name node commit the fs image to edit log 
so on every transaction on journal notes pushkar there is some confusion here when i talk about edit log it puts any file operation on the edit log it does not put fs image first of all now when it comes to the file operation whatever is happening on the edit log yes it will write on majority that majority is something which is a keyword here okay pushkar pushkar clear okay rakesh says something as you said uh, there will be three journal notes then the name node will update all three yes rakesh it will try to update on all three or let's say in the worst case at least in two journal nodes all together okay rakesh majority will be two but if so so if uh, rakesh pushkar was asking so now your questions are interconnected so now that i am saying majority so pushkar what will happen is if let's say there is an edit log entry which is there only in journal node 1 but not in journal node 2 and journal node 3 for a long time it means your active name node has failed okay pushkar that is the trigger point now is the time for stand by to know hey you know what something has gone wrong let me become active is this clear up to this point now the process of becoming the active is something which is which is duplication of the data yes rakesh definitely it is but it's a very small price okay what happens if the edit logs have been shared to all qgm and active node down so if it is shared up to that okay, okay so binoj is asking a very interesting question uh, binoj so let me first cover up to now you understood the trigger point now i will cover how will the standby will become active and then i'll answer your question if you allow me okay binoj fine so now that standby knew that i have to become active all it will do is whatever were the were the uh, majority edit logs you know in all of the in your journal notes it will apply on its edit log itself and since it keeps watching right it keeps watching the journal notes so the differences which have to be applied will be very less okay they they would be very less altogether so in that case uh, the failover will be very quick and then it will become active and the moment your passive will become active the other protocols you remember that uh, hadoop will ensure now that the standby has become active it will revoke the access to the edit log it will revoke the access to the journal nodes altogether it will uh, you know go for uh, killing the name node process itself on active name node so all of those uh, aspects will come into play is this clear so binoj now i'll ask answer your question so what happens so now let's say vinod has asked a question that uh, if the edit log has been shared with all the journal nodes and the active name node becomes down what will happen right vinod i understand you did i understand your question correctly right so in that case see go logically now that the transaction has been updated in all three so what will the standby do it will apply it in its own edit log right the next nothing is coming nothing is coming at all for quite a long time or let's say only the new entry will come then it will immediately know okay there is some failure so it will automatically become active and whatever was the failure transaction will have to be replayed okay we know is this clear now then if if it is clear then i'll take something else okay so one person was asking the question that it means three data node these uh, i think just a sec somebody was asking that three journal nodes they have to run on three different machines i just sorry i forgot who asked this question so let me tell so now that these journal nodes right let me tell these are actually the lightweight processes okay that's very important for you as an administrator to know because you will be the one who will be deciding where actually the qgm or the qgm processes are going to run okay so these are the lightweight processes 
they are not really very memory hungry altogether. So, they can actually be co-located with any of the other Hadoop demons, right, which are running on these machines. So, probably, you know, you can co-locate them on wherever your resource manager is running. So, there is not any significant load altogether. Or, you can actually go and decide, hey, you know, these specific three machines are my QJMs. Or probably, you can keep them in the same machine also. So, there is nothing which stops you. So, uh, whomsoever asked me this question, is this clear to that person also? I sorry, I am not able to recall that. But, did you get your answer? Oh, yes, Senthil. Senthil, so you got your answer, right? Okay. I will put them on zookeeper nodes. Yeah, Shravan. So, I mean, I'm not. So, they, see, you remember, Shravan, last time I didn't specify something, QJM. And this time I'm not specifying zookeeper. <laughs> okay. Because it will confuse others. That's it. But yes, as you are very well aware, you can. Shekhar. So, can we have three journal nodes on one machine? Yes. Yes, Shekhar, nothing stops you, but uh, again, it's a bit of risk, isn't it? You would like to have two processes in one and one process is in some, some, some other one. Right, Shekhar? Make sense? Make sense? Right. So, Senthil is saying only option is active node. No. Why? only active node, active node your HDFS daemon will be running, you might be running your uh, resource manager on some other machine altogether, right? Senthil? There also you can put it, right? Senthil? Right. Guys, is this clear? Is this crystal clear? Rather, I'll, I'll rephrase myself. Is this crystal clear to you now? Can I get some yes quickly? Great. Thank you. And now, did you understand why didn't I cover it last time? Because there was already a lot of information overload for you people. So that was the main reason due to which I did not cover it. Now I am going back to the previous slide. So I have gone back to the previous slide. Let me see whether it refreshes. Okay. Everybody is able to see the previous slide, right? Hadoop server roles. Slide number 5. Everybody? So now, guys, does it make sense? Because I am not going to speak now much on this. Then I will quickly, you know, I will shuffle because there are some more points in the next slide which I will be taking. So now, is this slide making sense to you people? Only Jagan says yes not others. What about others? Pushkar, Keshav, yes, great, great. So now, it is making sense, nice, nice, nice. There is no secondary name node SSN in HA. It is optional, Shravan, last time also I mentioned. So there is something which I which will tell you. There is something which I will tell you now. Okay, Shravan? With the QGMs, there is something which will come now. So I have gone back to the QGM slide. Let it to refresh for all of you. Okay. So is the same QGM file? How will name node choose? How will name node choose where to write the data on? Uh, so, Rakesh, if I am understanding your question correctly, you are saying, how will name node choose on what all journal nodes I have to write? Are you saying this? Rakesh? Yeah. So, basically, uh, it will select them in random. It will try to write at least on two. So, this, this, basically this, this journal node entry will be there with both of the name nodes all together. It will try to write in the best case on both, but at least in two. Okay, Rakesh? 
Rakesh? Okay. Now guys, there are some small points which I didn't tell you. Uh, you know, because <laughs> there are, you know, other aspects also. So now, I told you that there are at least three journal node demons which are going to run on your Hadoop cluster because the log has to be written on majority of the journal nodes. But since you are the administrator and your company can decide that uh, I did, okay, just a sec. Uh, okay, so your company can decide, hey, you know what, instead of three journal nodes, we need more, okay? We need more journal nodes altogether. So, it is a thumb rule. I am telling you, it is a thumb rule to have odd number of journal nodes. So, if you want to increase it from three, it will be either five or seven or nine or eleven and so and so forth. You got the idea, right? Now there are a lot of questions why and all, I'll come to that. But before that, let me ask, let me answer Naresh question. Naresh says, I did not understand the majority, why not all? So Naresh, it's just the same thing that, uh, see, if you try to write on all, right, so you are unnecessarily increasing one more write operation. We are following that greedy mechanism. We are saying, even if it is not there in all the machines, if it is present in majority, What concept will tell you more on it, okay? Pushkar is saying, is there any preference of using journal nodes over shared edit log? Or, no Pushkar, there is nothing. It is just the cost. Shared, shared, highly available storage doesn't come cheap, okay? Pushkar. So I'll, I'll rather say it depends on your pocket, <laughs> okay? Now. Uh, Shaker says, if we have failover mechanism as we discussed in the previous class, then why do we have the concept of QGM? Shaker, did I answer your question just now? Depends on your pocket. Shared, high, available will not come, <laughs> will not come cheap to you, right? Okay. Now the thing is, there is another very important part here. So why, why odd? Why am I talking about odd, right? So Naresh had asked that question, I'll first answer that, you know, I'll first explain this odd thing, then it will probably all of you will understand why I'm saying majority and then I'll take other questions at this point itself. So now let's say you are having three, so you can decide what is the majority, which is basically majority is three plus one four divided by two, that is n plus one by two, okay, that is at least the copy should be in two. The, if the copy of the edit log or any edit log operation is present in two, you are good. Okay? But if it is less than two, it means active name node has gone down. If let's say it is seven, then seven plus one, eight divided by two, that is four. So the copy should be at least in four, not on all the, if not, let's say on the seven, at least on four. If you are having the copy in less than four, it means fail, this is a failure case altogether. Okay, guys. Shavan, n minus one by two is to identify the failure. Shavan, n minus one by two is to identify the failure. That's what we are just saying. So seven minus one, that is six by two is equal to three. So if it is three, it means it's failure. Right, Shavan? Rakesh, I'll repeat it. Okay, to retain active state, yes, Naresh. Now, Naresh, did you get the point correctly? And other guys who were taking, uh, you know, telling me why not all? Why majority? Is this clear to everybody? Why majority? Why not all? Rakesh, I'll answer your question or I'll repeat it. So, why I'm saying is, I'm saying, let's say tomorrow your company or you decide to go for more than three journal nodes, you will always have to choose odd number. So either three or five, seven, nine and so forth, so and so forth, okay? The advantage which you get out of it is that you can define that any edit log operation has to be present in at least n plus one by two copies. That is, let's say if you go for five, 
okay, where n is equal to 5, then the copy has to be present on 5 plus 1, that is 6, by 2, that is 3, at least 3 copies of your edit log operation has to be there. If they are not, it's a failure case. Rakesh, did it help? Sure. So guys, that, okay, sure Naresh. <laughs> yeah, anytime. I mean, it's, it's all about you know, making sure that you guys know these concepts very well. So that's why, if we would have straightforward gone for probably the hands-on and all, right, this entire concept would be, would not be, you know, even visible to you, okay? So Binoj is saying, why so many? Three is good, no. Yes, yes. So Binoj, that's what, it depends, right? What if you go at Google, you are hired in Google, then, and you are, talking about some 40,000 nodes cluster, right? See, first of all, uh, you guys need to understand when you talk about yarn, you know, when you talk about yarn, you are talking about really, really huge amount of data, several, several of petabytes. Otherwise, you will be having less than 4,000 nodes most of the times, right? You will generally go with Hadoop 1.0. You, I mean, there is no reason for you to go towards that, right? You guys understand, right? You are learning yarn, but you should know why you are learning yarn, right? Is this clear to everybody? Whatever I said, is this clear? So, you have to think, you know, you have to change your mentality also accordingly. There, that when you talk about multiple, you are not really talking about some 5,000 or, you know, 2,000 machines. You are really talking about some 20, 30, 40, or 100,000 machines altogether. Yes, Pushkar, it is a good enough reason, but uh, uh, you know, if just the high availability is the reason for you to go for Hadoop 2, then I will say, go for MapR. They are providing it on proprietary basis. Right, Pushkar? Then don't even go with Cloudera or Apache, then go with this or Hortonworks, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I'm just telling you, that they will provide it by themselves. So, there will be a lot of points for you to make a decision, you as a system administrator have to make this decision. Okay guys, can I move to the next point? Guys, can I get yes? At least, I'm forcing all of you to type so per namespace at least three is required. Yes. Yes. To answer your question in one word, yes. Okay. Now moving and you can actually see, see there are only twenty four slides. Why? Because these are a lot of concepts which you have to know. When we'll go in the hands on you will find at least you know forty or fifty slides. <laughs> okay. Now now that you understood it, so I don't really have to, <clears throat> you know, spend much time on this particular slide. So all of you know that name node is at any point of time when, so if you are thinking let's say from CDS3 or uh, Hadoop 1.0, then you are thinking only from the primary name node altogether. Whenever you are thinking let's say from the yarn perspective, you are thinking for active name node altogether. So, it, at any point of time, name node is the one who is the master, all of you know, and it basically is uh, the one which, uh, you know, manages the metadata altogether, right, Me metadata altogether for all the data which is, you know, stored. So, what exactly is the type of metadata, can somebody tell? Can somebody tell what is the type, what, when I mean by the metadata, what do we really mean by it? Guys, can somebody just ping rather than speaking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost all of you are correct. So let me tell the metadata like what are the list of files, the list of the, the data blocks for a particular file, right? So file to data block mapping. Now, for each of the data block, what are the list of data nodes, right? 
you guys are able to follow that, right? So file is divided into a list of blocks, and then those blocks further are present because there is a replication. So each and every block is present in multiple of the data nodes altogether, right? So you, those things. Then the file attributes themselves, right? Access time. When did you access it last? Replication factor. I mean that anyway will be common, and the access rights altogether. So this is what is all about the metadata. And now I am sure you would appreciate why this metadata has to be on the memory all the time. Because before any of the things can be done on file, your name node has to decide these things on the runtime. So it was very easy for me to tell you in the last class, and nobody asked me this question also. Why do I need this data in RAM? I simply said a lot of clients, and many of you guys agreed also. But why? The question is still why. The answer is this, because <clears throat> you have to get all of these informations at any any point of time. Speed is one thing, Pushkar, but it is not just the speed. It's not just the speed. It's about a lot of these checks have to happen for each and every request. Can you imagine? Right. So what I, Shravan, what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, uh, that uh, list of files, the list of blocks for each file, each block, what exactly are the list of data nodes all together, right? The file attributes, like what are the access rights, what, are, what exactly is the access time, so and so forth. So all of these things are in metadata always. And each and every of these things have to be done before you or before name node allows you to do even allows you to even touch the file right all of these things to happen for each and every re request altogether so that is why we say that entire of the metadata has to be in the memory and that's why it is you know uh, uh, memory hungry kind of thing okay guys clear right guys yes yes Naresh, you are correct. Okay, and of course, <laughs> so you can actually see some of the pictures uh, here, right? So as you can see on the right hand side, name node is represent by, represented by a flashy sports car. That just means that it's of course the costly affair, and the data nodes are that old ambassador cars. I mean, guys who are not from India probably not even uh, be able to relate it. So they are like actual workhorses so this is they are the ones who, who are actually you know they are not the memory hungry guys but they are the data hungry guys you know uh, basically a lot of uh, uh, a lot of hard disk space will be there on on all of these uh, machines but from the processor side they are less demanding all always okay and this is where uh, actually all of your mapper tasks or the reducer tasks will run but when it comes, so more than that, I'm just twisting the picture which is there in your mind. More than that, when you talk about uh, Hadoop 1.0, they they would be the mapper and uh, reducer task themselves which will be running basically those JVMs. But when it comes to uh, Hadoop 2.0, the node manager, that container, everything would be running on e all of these data nodes altogether, right? So there is nothing much into this slide to be discussed other than this. If you guys allow, can I move to the next slide now? Is this clear? Nice. OK. Now, so this is, again, just a pictorial representation. Just a sec. Let me see. Is there something more? OK. Everybody agrees? Nice. Let me see whether all of you are able to see the new slide. Okay. So hope everybody is able to see the new slide altogether. It is just in the continuation of the name node and the data node. It is just a pictorial representation or whatever I just told, right? I'm just telling it right here. So you must be seeing some of this. Uh, like uh, you are seeing this name node where we are saying hey you know what it is just storing the metadata and the kind of metadata so let's say you are having a file called h info and p detail and h info so that slash user slash dog 
H info and then P detail. So H info is again broken into the data node, you know, uh, uh, sorry, block 1, block 3, block 5. So you can actually see this. Block 1 is present in data node 2, data node 3, right? Right below it. And then this, this particular block uh, 3, block 3 is present in node 1 and node 3 altogether. And then 5, 5 is present in uh, node 2 and node 3 altogether. So some of you might be having the questions, how is it deciding, what are the main deciding factors and all. We will, we, we are going to cover these things in today's session in a bit more detail. So I'm just saying these are the kind of metadata and it, uh, which is present in, you know, name node and uh, that's how the mapping happens. So very soon we are going to see the anatomy of some file read, file write and all. At that time, this picture will be very useful in, you know, forming your understanding altogether. Is this clear? Because this is, there is nothing much uh, new in this slide. There are some more exciting slides where we'll be talking, you know, bit more detail. Is this clear? Can I move to the next slide, guys? Do you allow me? <laughs> okay. Sure. <clears throat> sure, guys. Now, just a sec, let me see anybody, any other question? No. So by the time I'll refresh it. Yeah, that's a very important concept. Which, this is where I actually want to spend a lot of time. You know, at least under, I'm sure more than 15 minutes would be spent on this because this is a very important concept. Let me first see whether the, the screen has been refreshed for, for all of you or not. I'm on slide 9. That is talking about secondary name node. Is everybody able to see this slide? I hope everybody, because, you know, if I will start talking about the slide and you guys are not able to see, it will be a problem. So I think only Pushkar is able to see. Only Pushkar is the one who is saying yes. I mean, he is saying smiley. Others? Nice. Now, guys, I told you that secondary name node is optional, right? And so that makes, okay, oh, there is one more important point. I just forgot. I really forgot. I'm so sorry. Uh, guys, you, you are able to remember from the just what concluded discussion that journal nodes, right? So what was the standby name node doing all the time? What was it doing, by the way? It was reading the edit, the journal notes, seeing for any changes in the majority of the edit logs and was applying it, right? Everybody agrees it, right? Everybody is agreeing to that, right? So what was that process? What was that process? That process was, correct me if I'm wrong or if you think otherwise, wasn't it the checkpointing? Wasn't it the checkpointing? It was checkpointing only, right? It was happening. Everybody understands that, right? So now, I'm connecting the dots now. I gave a statement just now saying that the secondary name node is, the secondary name node is optional in Hadoop 2.0. Everybody understands now why it is optional? Because the whole idea, the whole idea of your secondary name node is to do the checkpointing process. And that is happening automatically. It is only for that rare case where both the nodes are down, then only you need the secondary name node. Otherwise, you don't need it. Is this clear to everybody? Guys? Right, Binoj? So, I'm saying, see, <laughs> whatever statements I'll give, right, there will always be an explanation towards it. And that is why I want to say, you know, it's very easy to, otherwise it will not even register in your minds also. So, yes, as Naresh is saying. Naresh, all I said is, see, your standby 
name node was continuously reading the journal nodes majority of them as soon as it finds something it up updates its its edit log right so it was what was it doing essentially what is it isn't it a checkpointing naresh i am asking you specifically yes shekhar you are correct naresh do you understand that what is happening at the end of the day isn't it a checkpointing naresh right and what was the purpose of secondary name node by the way checkpointing right right naresh so that was also checkpointing and this is also the checkpointing which is happening automatically that's why i said if you remember from the previous class or just some time back also i told secondary name node is optional now i am sure it should be crystal clear to everybody that why secondary name node is optional okay okay naresh is this clear okay nice so now guys the thing is very good in this class we are learning about the yarn we are learning about new architecture but let us come back to the real world what will happen is when you'll go back most of the industry standards people are still using hadoop 1.0 altogether okay so there are good enough chances that you will be dealing with secondary name node and when you deal about secondary name node you are actually talking about the checkpointing how does so we we talk about checkpointing right all of us know that secondary name node does the checkpointing how does it do how does it do what are the internals right isn't it so how does it really so fs image edit log we just talked about two files and then we said okay something happens but what are the different steps one by one right this is something which we will be talking now okay so before i proceed shavan says with hadoop 2.0 is the checkpointing fast of course shavan it is fast as you saw right majority you just wrote and immediately it has been up, uh, updated by the passive name node or uh, sorry stand by name node altogether okay shavan how will we know if, if all the data is getting updated rakesh it is not the data which is getting updated it is just the edit log which is getting updated right rakesh so if majority of them are not having the same entry it means something is wrong didn't i tell so that's where you will come to know okay there is something wrong with the system now okay rakesh is this clear can i move rakesh okay so now see this <clears throat> uh, i'm sure many of you would have seen it on the screen now so you guys remember that uh, let's talk about hadoop 1.0 so name node since it is the master and we said it is the highest uh, configuration machine so this makes it automatically the single point of failure and then we said hey you know what i cannot provide you high availability but i can provide you the failover right for that we introduced a concept called secondary name node so as it is written also that it's not a hot standby of the name node it's not a hard standby but you can recover it and what it does is it connects to the name node primary name node every one hour and last time also i told that it is a configurable property okay by default it is uh, 3600 in seconds so that is number of seconds in an hour okay so uh, every hour it connects it and then it does that basically that housekeeping operation so that name node metadata and all is backed up and once uh, you know uh, the metadata is saved based on that if the name node failure happens then you can build it 